each year, I have friends and family ask me, who should I draft? Who's going to give me more points? And I'm not a fantasy football guru. I Trust me. I've won only one. I've played for six, six, seven years, maybe seven years max. I've played fantasy football. And uh, I've only won one championship. I've been runner-up multiple years, probably three or four years. I've been runner-up. Not straight, but in, in, in the six or seven years I've played. I've been runner-up. I've also finished last place before. I don't I don't know if that's it's not a good thing obviously but I'm, I'm telling you this is where I'm at but this year I decided to make a ranking system for quarterbacks running backs receivers defense and tight ends kickers it doesn't matter uh, kickers and punters are people too but it does not matter who, who we rank uh, but I decided to make a, a little ranking system for you guys for everyone and for all some family members uh, that are going to be doing their fantasy, fo- fantasy football this year. Uh, <clears throat> we'll also do another one once it's playoff time. Might do one. Also, if you end up liking this, let me know if you would like to see a live draft. Not a mock draft, my draft that I have for my league. If you would like to see a live draft on YouTube and show you why I pick certain players and kind of stuff like that. Now, I know ESPN just did a... What was a 28-hour live stream of mock drafts and fantasy football talk? I, that is, I'm not doing that. Mine's gonna be the whatever hour and hour and a half it takes to draft, and that that's it. That's it. I'm not gonna go a 28-hour stream. But let me know. To me at Short Sports Show if you guys end up liking this. So quarterbacks, here we go. 2016 rankings for quarterbacks. These are the guys you should look out for. And, uh, you know, quarterbacks are someone you should pick kind of later in the draft unless you really feel comfortable with picking number one, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is Aaron Rodgers. He's going to throw for a lot of yards, going to give you the touchdowns, equal points. Aaron Rodgers. And also been more consistent. Then you got Cam Newton, number two. He's going to give you the rushing. He's going to give you the passing. Now he's getting more more consistent. Earlier years, obviously, he's been very inconsistent. Now he's gradually being more and more consistent. Cam Newton, finally getting some weapons around him. They can stay healthy. Him. Then you got Andrew Luck. Eli Manning, I have a number four. Sterling Shepard's going to have a breakout year, ladies and gentlemen. Watch Sterling Shepard. Going to have a breakout year. So uh, more weapons for Eli Manning. Obviously, Odell Beckham's going to do Odell Beckham things. Eli Manning is your guy. After that, Kirk Cousins. Now, you should have weapons everywhere. You got Deshaun Jackson and Pierre Garçon in contract years. That means they're going to want the ball, and they're going to want to make big plays. And if Josh Doxson can be healthy, he can be another breakout wide receiver. You also have a top tight end. and, and uh, Is it Josh Reed? Jordan Reed. Jordan Reed. I knew that. <laughs> you have Jordan Reed. As a tight end as well. So, weapons around Kirk Cousins. That's another big dog right there. Drew Brees, Carson Palmer, Ben Roethlisberger, Phillip Rivers. And then I have Tom Brady. He's going to be out for, uh, obviously, the first four games. And, honestly, I've I've been the victim of selecting Tom Brady as my top quarterback in the usually early rounds as well. And I've also been on the side. At, at the same time, I've seen other people get quarterbacks late. And they end up giving more points than Tom Brady does. So, that's why I have Tom Brady at the bottom. The four games obviously hurt him. And you shouldn't draft him early. Even if you're a huge Tom Brady lover and, and Patriots lover, you should really chill out and probably get a different quarterback. It's okay. You're not going to hurt Tom Brady's feelings. Next is the running backs. We have Todd Gurley, number one. Now, I know a lot of people want to go Adrian Peterson. I am going Todd Gurley. Catching out of the backfield. They're going to rely on the running game a lot more. I'm going Todd Gurley. Then you have Adrian Peterson. Might be the last year you pick him very high because he's you know up in up in the age and who knows how much he's got left in his tank. So Adrian Peterson should still be give you a good solid fantasy year. David Johnson from Arizona Cardinals. That is a guy who is starting to get more and more talk. Drafted out of North uh, Northern Illinois and. Did pretty well his first year at Arizona Cardinals. Now, going uh, and really should be the starter all the way through. 
Kickoff returns, I know they don't count in fantasy football, but he can do that as well. He's such a dynamic player. Obviously, catching out of the backfield and being a dominant, powerful force at the running back position, David Johnson should be a top guy. Ezekiel Elliott, I'm going to put him up there kind of high just because he has huge upside. His potential can be very beneficial, but obviously, there's a big unknown. So, it's a high risk. Look at other players first, but you might be willing to take the gamble with him. After that, Devontae Freeman. If he was healthy, one of the top running backs in the NFL, and he was one of the top running backs, but had some concussions and, and kind of slowed him down a bit. Devontae Freeman, awesome running back. Then there's Eddie Lacy, Jeremy Hill, Jamal Charles, if he's healthy, LeSean McCoy, and Le'Veon Bell. I would have had Le'Veon Bell as number one, but obviously suspended for the first four games. That hurts his case. So dropping him down. Wide receivers, Antonio Brown is number one, ladies and gentlemen. It just, he just is. Odell Beckham Jr., number two. Julio Jones, number three. DeAndre Hopkins and A.J. Green, I have really tied at four. So you got four A and four B. They're really just right there. It's just who you want to go with because A.J. Green, it's, he's always that, me for me, not questionable player, but it's like I want to go and pick him. But he's their main receiver. Now, especially this year, it, it, you might want to actually drop him a bit because Bengals really don't have that many wide receivers now. They lost two of them to free agency. How is that going to affect them for defenses knowing that now they can really just control A.J. Green and double-team him? Who knows if that's going to affect DeAndre Hopkins, he had four different quarterbacks, four terrible quarterbacks last season. Still... 1,500-yard season, double-digit touchdowns, over 100 catches. Come on now. He's got Brock Osweiler. Whether he's good or bad, he's got to be much better than the other four. Got to get him. Allen Robinson, top dog as well. But they also have a ton of receivers. They actually hurt him then. Uh, Des Bryant, Brandon Marshall, Sammy Watkins, and Amari Cooper. Don't forget about Amari Cooper. Also, wild card, get uh, Sterling Shepard. Draft him late in the draft. Most people will not look at him. They will not remember about him. I guarantee you, breakout player, rookie of the year, is Sterling Shepard, wide receiver, if he's healthy, of course, uh, and he should be. Sterling Shepard, New York Giants wide receiver. I'm not a Giants fan, but you got to be happy for a Giants fan. Sterling Shepard, rookie of the year. Go get him. Eighth, ninth, tenth round. He should be there. Go get him. Tight ends, we're only going to do the top five, and they really, I think everybody agrees with this. Rob Gronkowski, Jordan Reed, Greg Olson, Delaney Walker, and Travis Kelce. That's that's really it. There's no one big dog. Now, there's going to be some tight ends that will come out of nowhere and have one great week, and then you go pick them up on the waivers, and then the next week, two catches, 35 yards. That's just how it happens with tight ends. So, tight end, I have fallen victim of picking them late and not benefiting and really getting any uh, value. So I might change it up here this year. There's so many good receivers that maybe you can wait on receivers a little bit, get them your first two picks, and then wait for a later rounds, get a tight end, get your quarterback, get a couple running backs, and then go back to receivers. So I might pick tight end a little bit earlier this year than I normally do. Finally, defense, I would go with this. Now people are going to disagree with me because guess what? I have the Denver Broncos at number five. I'm a little bit concerned. I just don't feel that the defense is going to truly repeat what it did last year. Maybe that's just me. I, I don't know. I have I don't hate the Broncos. I'm a Chargers fan, but not being biased here. I just I don't feel confident in the Broncos defense this year for some weird reason. Just got a weird feeling about it. I could be completely wrong. Number one, I have the Arizona Cardinals defense. If everyone's healthy, defense should be number one in the NFL. Go get them. One of the best D-lines. Obviously, some of the best secondary and linebackers, pretty solid group as well up front. I would get the Arizona Cardinals. Number two, the Seattle Seahawks. Every year they've been in the top five defense. Go and get them because, you know, this is the Legion of Boom. After that, the Carolina Panthers. I'm going to put them at 3A and at 3B, the Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs maybe should really be number three. Secondary, Marcus Peters looks st- – Really good. He intercepted uh, Russell Wilson in the preseason, and he looks like he should just be in the same shape as last season and be uh, benefiting from an entire full offseason in the NFL now. 
Uh, and obviously their pass rush has been one of the best. So maybe the Kansas City Chiefs, actually, I'm going to change. go ahead and change it. Put them at number three. Carolina Panthers number four with the Denver Broncos at number five. That is my 2016 fantasy football rankings. Let me know in the comment section what you have them as. And if you want me to do a live draft for my league, I'm also going to be creating a public uh, league for the short sports show fans, supporters, I should say. They're not fans. Fan sounds egotistical. Supporters, you support the show. Uh, I'm thinking about making one here pretty soon. I like to wait until after preseason, so that way if there's any injuries, we're not screwed by picking someone who's not even going to be playing. So I'll probably do it right before week one action of the NFL. Let me know in the comment section down below if you'd like to see it, and I will see you guys next week. I don't wanna go, I, I don't wanna go.